Today, I'm gonna to show you how to rig your car in Unreal Engine using a very simple car rig. We're gonna take any car model you have or find online and get it ready to drive in no time. What's up guys, my name is Brandon Larry and I go by Lunchbox Online. I've spent the last few years working in the automotive industry with brands like BMW, making commercials and social media content. And I can tell you that when it comes to making car content in Unreal Engine, having a proper car rig is one of the most important parts of the process. We're gonna break this video into three super easy steps. We're gonna prepare your car, rig your car, and finally animate it. So what is a car rig and why do you need one? Well, in the most simple of terms, a car rig simulates a real driving physics. Instead of just moving a 3D model around, the rig makes it feel like an actual car with suspension and how it would behave in real life. The rig does all the work under the hood so you can just start creating and not worry about the rest. So let's dive in. Today we'll be using the cinematic car rig by my great friend Amir over at Mad Goat Studio. I use it on all of my own projects and Amir was generous enough to give us the free version of this rig ready to download in the link below. So we'll start our project from scratch. I always use the film and video blank preset. Next, we'll grab the cinematic car rig light from Fab if you don't have it already. We'll add it to our library and then add it to our project. The next thing we'll do is import the car model. I found a car model online from CG Trader. It is a free one. If you want to download it, I will link it below, but feel free to use any car model that you have. So what I'm going to do is create a folder, call it cars. I'll make a folder called Supra, and then we'll go ahead and just drag our car FBX into this project. Now I always just use the pipeline defaults. I just click it for safety and hit import. Once your car is fully imported, you'll notice a ton of parts. I chose a car with a lot of parts because I knew it would be a challenge. And to be honest, this is a very often and realistic scenario where you have a bunch of different car parts, either from a client or got it online. And our job is to organize that and get it ready for the rig. So we'll go ahead and save. And now we'll just dock the content browser in our layout. So let's take a look at the cinematic car rig. Let's see what the final result should look like. And to do that, you'll see that there's a demo car in here. And if we just drag and drop the BP demo car into the scene, you'll see that this is the final result. And you can see when you drag it, the wheels move. And when you rotate the plane, the car sticks to the ground. And if we just go ahead and open this blueprint, we'll see exactly what this needs. So I'll just go to open full blueprint editor and viewport. And here's our car. And as you can see, these are the three meshes that we need. We need this body, which if I open it up, we have the body without the wheels. We have the static mesh wheel, and it's just this one wheel that is copied across for the front wheel mesh and the rear wheel mesh. And we have the front caliper and the rear caliper, which is the same static mesh. So if you open it up, it's just the caliper. So all in all, we need the body, the wheel, and the caliper. So that's what we need to separate our car model into to plug it into this blueprint. So let's go to our super folder. And what I like to do is just filter it out by static mesh. And this will give us only our car parts. So we'll hit Command A and drag and drop our car into the scene. Once our car is loaded, you can see that this particular model is a lot larger than it should be. So I went ahead and found the right size, which is 0.1. So this looks about right to me. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this floor mesh that it came with, we don't need that. Now we have our entire car in the scene, but as you'll see, there are so many parts. And if you remember, we need to separate this out into just the body, the wheel, and the caliper. So how do we do that? So let's just go ahead and start with the wheel. A great trick I like to do is if you press Control, Alt, and left mouse drag, you can actually select individual elements. So what I'm gonna do is actually just start by selecting the body. And we just want to hide the body. So if I control out drag, if I press H on my keyboard, we will see that we are starting to hide the parts. And we're just going to keep doing this until we get rid of all of the body. So now we just have the wheels and the way this rig works is we just need the front right wheel. So we're going to go ahead and just select the front right wheel like this. 
And we're just gonna go ahead and put it in its own folder and we'll call this front right wheel. And then we'll go ahead and just hide this folder and turn it off. Come back to that later. And then we'll go ahead and select the rest of the wheels and put them in their own folder. We'll just call it wheels. We actually won't need these, but we'll just keep them in a separate folder in case. And we'll just go ahead and turn that off. So now everything not in a folder should just be the body. So we'll just highlight all of this and unhide it. And we have the floor as well. So we'll just unselect the floor and put this into its own folder and call it body. So now we have the body, we have the front right wheel. So we're missing one final thing and that is the caliper of the front right wheel. So if we go ahead and unhide the front right wheel, you'll see that we have a caliper here, but as you can see, it is not showing up correctly. And that is because sometimes when you import a model, the materials are not two-sided. So if we open it up, click on this node here and type in two-sided, check that box and hit save, and you'll see that it comes back. But that won't matter once we actually texture the car and that could be for another video. So now we have our caliper and we're just gonna go ahead and put it in its own folder called front right caliper and take it out of the front right wheel folder. So now we have our three categories separated, but we need to then combine them into one mesh. So if we go back to the car rig and see exactly what we need, it's just these three, the body caliper and the wheel. So we're gonna do the same thing right now. And let's just go ahead and start with the body. So if you right click, select all descendants and we'll select all of the body. And this is the cool part of doing it all inside of Unreal. If you go up to where it says selection mode and go down to the modeling tools, we'll then open up the modeling mode. This is on by default in Unreal 5.6, but if you are using 5.5, I believe, or earlier, you might have to enable the modeling plugin. To do that, you just go to edit, plugins, and type in modeling, and it'll be this modeling tools editor mode. So now in modeling mode, we'll go to this X form tab, and in here is this button called merge. And essentially what this is gonna do is just combine all of these parts into one mesh. So we're gonna click it, and the default settings are totally fine. The only thing that we will do is change this delete inputs, because basically what that is gonna do is gonna delete all these meshes and we don't really wanna do a destructive workflow. So we're gonna go down to keep inputs. We could also change the name of this. The default is combined, but let's just call it body. And we're just gonna go ahead and hit accept. It'll then take a few moments to build the mesh and what it leaves you with is the merged mesh right here. So if we turn off the body, we can then see that this body is still here and we're left with this. So the problem now is that the axis is off center. These arrows should be centered on the model for it to work in the rig. So to do that, we're gonna stay in this X form tab, go to edit pivot and click center and accept. And that's all you have to do. So now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the wheel and caliper. So let's turn off the body, turn on the front right wheel and we'll do the caliper at the same time. Let's do the wheel first. We'll grab all of these parts Merge, type in front right wheel, keep inputs, accept. So now we have our wheel and we're just gonna go to the edit pivot, center and accept. So now we'll do the same thing for the front right caliper. And with the front right caliper, um, because it's already just one mesh, we don't need to do the merge like we usually would. Um, so let's just go ahead and find it in our content browser and we're gonna duplicate it and let's just call it front right caliper. And let's just move it into the folder where our other meshes are. And then we'll just drag our new front right caliper mesh into this slot. So with the caliper, we actually don't wanna center the pivot like we usually would on the caliper itself, but we want it to be on the wheel. So to do that, we're gonna hit it cancel. And the trick is, we're gonna go ahead and drag the caliper inside of the wheel. And we're now gonna zero out the coordinates. Uh, we'll turn off that old wheel. And if we come back here, we'll see our wheels now zeroed out. Let's hide the floor. And now we'll go to the edit pivot of the caliper. 
And instead of hitting center like we would, we're just gonna zero each of these out. And now it has the same access as the wheel and we'll go ahead and hit accept. So now we have the body, the caliper and the wheel and we just have one final step to do. So let's turn the floor back on and the body and I'm just gonna move the wheel up a bit so we can see. The problem now is that even though we centered the axis on the models themselves, the axes aren't facing the correct way. And to show you what I mean, you can see our thumbnails here and we're gonna compare them to what they should look like. And if you go to the demo car meshes folder, they need to be facing this way, like the car left to right here, the wheel facing the same way and the caliper. And if we go back to ours, You'll see our body is facing the wrong way, wheel, everything. So we're gonna fix that in one click. All we need to do is throw in the demo car into the scene here. And what we need to do is make the car body, the wheel and the caliper facing the same way as the demo rig here. So we'll select the body, the wheel and the caliper and we're gonna just rotate them 90 degrees like this. And we'll go back to our modeling mode X-Form and Bake Transform. Default settings are fine like this. And we just hit accept and we're good to go. And let's go check and make sure our thumbnails are looking correct. So if you see here, car left to right, the wheels facing us, caliper like that. If we go to the demo car meshes, we're looking the same. One other thing that I noticed is that our car body and wheel are a lot bigger than the demo rig. So here's a good time to show you a mistake I made and how we can easily fix that. So we're gonna scale it all down to 0.6. And as you can see, our car body is very close to the size of the demo rig. And to keep this scale, we're just gonna hit Bake Transform again. So now we have our three meshes prepped and ready to just drop into the rig. But first, why don't we just hide some of these things that we really don't need to see anymore. Just put them in their own folder and call them car parts and go ahead and hide it. We can delete the light rig. And now we are ready to create our own custom blueprint. So if you go to the blueprint folder, we're gonna right click the BPCCR light. And what we're gonna do is create a child blueprint class. Essentially what that is gonna do is create a copy of the blueprint. We never actually wanna use the main blueprint. We always wanna have that. So if we have more cars, we can just come back to the blank default one. Let's call our blueprint Supra and we will put it into the map and let's open it up. As you can see, these slots are empty, but we're gonna fill them with the car parts that we made. So let's go to our folder. Let's put the body into the body slot, the front right wheel into the wheel mesh. And we're gonna use the same mesh for the rear. And then we're gonna use the calipers for the calipers. And as you can see, the body is there, but it seems like the wheels are not. They are actually there, we just need to adjust the settings. I'll show you. If you turn this off, they're kind of hanging out in the middle of the car there. So if we put our body mesh back in, what we're gonna do is adjust the body height just a little bit for now. Then we'll start with the front side offset and that will sh reveal our wheels. And then we'll do the same thing with the rear wheels. And then we're gonna go to the front offset and this will slide the front tires to the front and then the rear to the back. So to get this more accurate, we're gonna to change to the left mode. And here you can see the wheels. We'll do the front offset for the front and the rear for the back. And we can adjust the body height again until we feel it's correct. And then we're gonna to switch to the front. And this will show us that our wheels are way outside. So we'll go to the rear side offset and adjust them in. And then now we'll go to the rear and we'll do the front offset. And that should be semi-close. We'll just go back to perspective and take one last look. And it looks good. I'm just gonna change the front a little bit here. And we're good to go. So we can close out of this blueprint and you can see our car is fully in the world, rigged and ready to go. Let's go ahead and test it. If we move the ground, it sticks to it. Now, if we slide the car back and forth, the wheels spin. So now I'll show you how we can animate this and drive it. Let's put our Supra in a car folder, and then let's go ahead and create a new folder and call it cinematics. And in there, we're just gonna create a new level sequence and we'll call it shot 01. 
we're gonna open this up and let's just add a camera in here we'll unpilot it and then let's go ahead and add a camera rig rail and if you can't see it just press g on your keyboard and we're gonna go ahead and make this a long road essentially what this camera rig rail is is the path or spline for the car to drive on i'm going to put these in a folder called cameras we're just going to move the spline back a little bit and extend the road even more and we're going to go ahead and put the camera rig rail into the sequencer and then we'll also put the supra into the sequencer as well and the way that we're going to make this drive is by attaching the supra to the camera rig rail and as you can see it jumps over but let's just zero it out so it's right on the track and if we go to the camera rig rail and click the plus icon and go down to current position on rail we'll set a keyframe at zero here and then we'll set a keyframe at the very end of the track at one okay now if we play this back we'll see our car is driving and it's good to go let's go ahead and scrub it as you can see right here there's a glitch happening and if this happens to you it's likely because there's something there but it's hidden which is what we did we see that there's a wheel there we can just turn all these on the car parts just unhide everything uh, i'm just going to move the rail because it's easier for now and usually we're not going to have all this stuff in our scene in like a real world so we'll just move the car over here and then we'll go ahead and rehide everything. So now if we scrub it and play it back, there's our car. Now just to demo the car driving and to see the wheels spinning, I'm gonna attach the camera to the car. So we'll just go ahead and click the plus icon, attach and hit the Supra. And let's go ahead and pilot our camera now. I'll just go ahead and change the focus to the car as well and we can see the car rig working now if we hop out of that what if we want to just change the car to drive around a path what we can do is grab the end point over here slide it over and then rotate the point and we'll do the same with this one and rotate it and we can almost imagine it as it's driving around a turn so let's put it over here. We're gonna extend it even more, do something like that and extend this point out. Extend this point out as well. Extend this point out as well. So I created this turn to just demo it going around a corner. And if we play it back, we're gonna see that the car doesn't actually turn with the rail. So to fix that, if we click on the rig rail and click at the top here, there is a button called lock orientation to rail. Once you click that, the car is now gonna follow the direction of the rail. So let's play that back really quick. And we can see that it's now following the turn. And let's just watch from our camera real quick. And we are good to go. And for fun, let's just say this is going up an incline. We'll grab the rig rail and the floor and rotate it upward something like that and we can see the car sticks to the ground and is going up so no matter the environment that it's in it'll stick to the road and follow the path that you set it on and there you have it guys a fully rigged car ready to drive and animate i would definitely check out the full rig as it offers so many more features like drifting and vibration controls that really just help sell that extra level of realism and if you liked this video, I think you might like this video where you can see the rig in a real BMW commercial and I take you behind the scenes on how it was all made. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll catch you in the next one.